Hello there and welcome back to the Agassino Zynga show with me your host Agassino Zynga and this is episode number 378 that's 378 of the Agassino Zynga show with me your host Agassino Zynga how you feeling great amazing if it's your first time tuning into the show make sure you smash that like button hit subscribe and leave me a comment down below if you're listening via the podcast app of course leave me a five star review download it share it send it as a text attach it to the side of an envelope and then put that into the letterbox or put it behind your heels as you're running up the stairs on your way towards people can see the show whatever you can do share where you can and if you want to support the show via patreon you're more than welcome to there's a link down below in the show notes in the description for as little as one dollar per month you get access to the, my entire audio library as well this show in full audio format before it comes out anywhere else before it's out on spotify before it's out on itunes and all that malarkey you can get it directly via patreon in the link below subscribe down below patreon.com for just agostino patreon.com for just a-g-o-s-t-i-n-h-o in the link below get involved don't delay great amazing anyway here we are hanging on and doing the best that we can for those of you that are listening via youtube and you've kind of heard a bit of the popping of the peas please bear with me um i've just ordered a new um what are they called foam shield guard thing mic foam thing for this pod mic that i have here which i've purchased recently so that should be coming in the post very very soon so you won't be um hearing the pops of my peas but in case that's happening please lower the volume slightly on whatever device you're using or just throw your phone out the window either way you can solve it <laughs> oh mate so what's changed not much really in it they've sort of they've sort of basically ironed out some details regarding our new restrictions with covid they basically um let us know that you know mcdonald's doesn't count as table service so anyone that was worried anyone that was sweating bricks thinking oh my god what am i gonna do how am i gonna be able to order something for me rest assured if you go to mcdonald's you'll be completely fine there's no need to pick up or you know only have delivery you can go in there and enjoy a sweet sweet double cheeseburger as long as you may please because mcdonald's doesn't count as table service it was amazing when they made that stipulation i guess they had to kind of clarify it that way but using mcdonald's as a example really did make you feel like hey are they only looking after some of the biggest corporations are they not really looking after their you know citizens or small business owners and you know for what you see online it probably makes that much sense um but yeah that's about it really um we're now what gonna approach the curfew it's happening very soon which was not starting from today actually so you're not allowed out after what 10 p.m essentially you have to kind of um limit your travel to essential stuff i don't know what how that counts as essential does a booty call count as essential that's going to pick up kind of essential um getting a late night kebab is that essential um or you know especially if you're black right you definitely you know if you're a black guy you know how late sometimes you have to stay at the barber shop to in order to get a haircut from the person that you actually like to cut your hair um sometimes you end up leaving there at like midnight you know so that would be funny isn't it seeing all these um young strapping <laughs> lads with you know precise skin fades being you know holed up against a wall in handcuffs because they just decided to get a trim at half nine and it over you know the time overlaps a bit because their barber decided to divulge the details of his you know second baby mother drama it's all mad man it's all absolutely mad but hey we are hanging on as best that we can we're trying to make the best of no we're not trying to make the best of it we're trying to just hang on we're not trying to make the best of it we're trying to hang on as best as we can and hope that as soon as the stuff's over we're all still alive we've all got our fingers and our toes so we can kind of carry on and do what we do so so much stuff to get into the whole show is jam-packed full of um interesting topics and all that malarkey so grab whatever drink you have grab yourself a sandwich a lollipop uh some sort of confectionery item whatever it is that you like to nibble on sit back relax and enjoy i'm gonna go for a few interesting stuff that i've kind of picked up on the interwebs and then of course you know um just riff in between as we usually do on this god forbidden show um announcing stuff i think i want to do a little live stream during the ufc 253 that's coming up this weekend israel adesanya versus paulo costa um i have to obviously remember to do it because sometimes i tend to stay up to watch ufc but other times i tend to kind of you know wait for the morning download the entire torrent and kind of replay it back but if i have got the capability to and i have got the endurance to stay up late i'm definitely wanting to 
um have that be a bit of a live stream do it on youtube or just do a bit of a watch along quote unquote that should be fun in it watching some ufc pretending like i'm joe rogan or pretending like i'm jimmy smith you know and giving you some of the info some of the lowdown or and who i think is gonna win like, ooh, i like the one in the red shorts Ooh, i like him in the gray shorts that, that's as far as my analysis goes right <laughs> i'm gonna go to hit him in the face that's gotta hurt you know all that nice good stuff um that should be fun so um, look out for that announcement coming up very soon. Um, on the football front, not much info in it really. Nothing has changed on the United side of things. Um, funnily enough, Man United are really good at PR. You know, they they have an expert ability of somehow being able to resist the calls, um, the social media pressure. They're somehow able to withstand all of that heat and just you know um, carry on. Right? They don't get they don't get they don't get flustered at all the whole you know fan base was up in arms when Regulon and Bale signed for um, Tottenham and then Thiago went to Liverpool and it just felt as if like you know finally the pressure was going to make some for some sort of change and then you heard a rumor about Ed Woodward putting his house up for sale because the rumor was there were going to be a whole bunch of fans that were going to go down to his you know gated mansion and you know throw fireworks and you know flat um, hold up some signs telling him to fuck off essentially um and all these stories kept coming out and you're thinking okay cool then suddenly you get patrice ever sitting down and doing an amazing 20 minute um you know instagram live video where he essentially opened up about his experience at united and some of the you know behind the scenes stuff that we all knew you know there's no real football people there at united Patrice ever mentioned something about the the lawyers at our club going to meet some of our players and again if you don't know much about football um I'll spare you the details but essentially if you're trying to wow you know because football players are basically the prize right My, clubs are essential too but you know the prize assets are the are the football players right they generate income they are um tools that you can use to you know win championships bloody blah, blah 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 so essentially you have to kind of go out and headhunt them right players already apply for jobs or roles or positions in teams teams go out then get the player that they want in order to kind of boost their profile to allow them to win or to fill numbers in the squad whatever it may be but you have it to com you having to convince these very young talented players to come to your club and choose you ahead of anybody else right so in most clubs you would go and get some of your more storied legends or maybe a celebrity fan to go and maybe convince the player that that your club is the one for them right or maybe your manager if they're well known and quite charismatic right and that's part of the basically the dance that you do in transfers it's not enough just having the money it's not enough just you know agreeing terms you have to kind of convince and woo them so imagine united deciding to send out one of our bald headed um you know or tip two pay wearing lawyers to go and convince a mediterranean football player that they should come and play in north of england <laughs> right main is a well well um, respected club in football you know we've won a lot of things we have a rich history but imagine that some pasty um <sighs> sorry about that wow just imagine that right some pasty american lawyer with ginger hair boarding at the top um you know horrible teeth he probably smells like cigars and whiskey rocking up to some player in spain and telling him hey you should come play manchester I'm like manchester isn't always raining there and you'd be like yeah can't you tell i don't have a tan imagine that imagine trying to convince players with lawyers so what is whatever patrick's ever said was no surprise to most fans i think for the casuals or for the people that kind of only watch us from the outside in the people that are like oh you're doing a good job you just be patient those kind of you know wankers people that don't really pay attention it was probably a bit of a surprise but anyone else has you know been paying attention and really um analyzing what's been happening since Sir ferguson uh retired you would know that we've been an absolute joke ever since the glazers took over so you know there is a benefit to it in some respects, I think. I think um, I've seen it in more so with politics, right? I've mentioned it previously on here a few times. I've never really been a, into politics like that until lockdown, basically. No one's got no, no one's got anything to do. So essentially, you're keeping up to date with all the global coronavirus restrictions and updates um, that's going on that, you know, for some reason have been politicized in most places. And it's, you know, uprisings here and there, stuff going on in Belarus, you know, Russian opposition leaders getting poisoned. It's, it's, you can't avoid it, unfortunately. But part of the reason why I think I'm so... Um, ambivalent to it and just you know it is what it is is partly to do with football because you see so many things happening especially to the club that you love that's way out of your control 
that there is that you kind of quickly realize that there's no real need there's no um you don't gain anything by crying and ranting every single day it does absolutely nothing it's like you're screaming into the wind like no one no one no one cares no one's listening um and it's just going to change whenever it's going to change so for instance like we need a change of ownership right probably i would i would go as far to say like you know we've had what five managers since Sir ferguson's retired five or four right Moyes, Van Gaal, Mourinho, um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, four managers. And I would say, you know, categorically, I can put my hand on the heart and say probably regardless of who we get, we're probably never going to be a big club. We're, ne we're probably never going to be a championship, Champions League winning club again until we change our owners, right? Let's just say that. I'll put that in the open. If that's the case, you know, it doesn't matter who we get in as a manager. We need to change the owners, but the owners are only going to change when somebody comes in one of the, with an uh, with a uh, with an offer that makes sense, or if they're willing to sell. Right, that's the thing. I think a lot of people are missing out, especially fans online who are like, "Oh, we should all band together and put in some money, and then we can buy United." It's like, yeah, we can all do that. Everyone could put together what? What is it? Seventy five thousand each, right? It, maybe for the season ticket holders, that would equal to about about 4 billion or something like that i don't know what it was some figure or maybe just our global over, overall global audience whatever it is right everyone chips in let's say 80 grand right and tries to buy united they glad to still have to agree to sell it's not like as soon as you get the money it kind of triggers it's not like a clubs don't have buyout clause right it's not like that you just they, they have to sell um the numbers have to make sense is it cash up front do you want to take a loan out against it whatever there's so many you know um there's so many things that need to fall in line in order for that sell to make sense. But essentially, fans just have to kind of put up with this nonsense. We have, There's literally nothing we can do. And I honestly do think that's been a, one of the most, that's been the best training in terms of, you know, now suddenly, you know, being aware of what's happening in politics. I'm, I, and I'm seeing people, you know, really losing their shit about Trump, about Boris online, all this sort of stuff. And it's just like... Pfft. I don't really get it and i never have and i guess it's because of the football training because I've, I've i know just how powerless one individual person is um screaming into the wind and i know usually things just have cycles in it this just might be our cycle of just going through some shit we just we're just a bit crap at the moment um other teams are thriving liverpool are doing what they're doing arsenal have, have maybe turned a corner chelsea are in transition like everyone's part of going through their thing and this might just be our thing so we just might have to just suck it up and kind of you know um hope for better days sooner rather than later but it's nice to see some of our ex-players talking it's nice to see ever talking frio talking is a bit rich but hey you know I, I, I like his saying stuff anyway but he was you know one of the people that essentially was clamoring for soul sharks to get the permanent job which looking back was probably a bad idea we should have just probably held out on giving him the permanent contract until you know the end of the season but hey um what can we do um you don't really hear much from gary neville criticizing the manager or the ownership but maybe that's because he's the owner himself of a club so he kind of tries to stay a bit off of it he kind of always calls for a bit of a revamp as opposed to just getting out the glades all together you know david beckham made his um allegiances known when he wore the green and yellow bandana sorry the green and yellow scarf so it's difficult it's a difficult situation but for the most part if you're a united fan you just have to just you know hope and pray that it changes in the future and again um that's similar to what it is what's going on now in politics really i think that's the same thing i would imagine so because there's part of me thinking especially in america with some of the vitriol that trump gets you're like god damn it man like you think to yourself like on the other end if he ends up winning what's good like i think some people are saying that no no some people are winning i was i would argue that if he loses it's probably a bigger problem for americans than it is if he wins maybe especially considering how conspirator conspiratorial he is and how he's, he's already sowing the seeds of discontent right he said already oh i'm gonna i'm not gonna give up power easily and you have to wait and see and He's already sowing the seeds of this conspiracy about ballot voting and all this sort of nonsense, right? He's already um, getting his excuses and his conspiracy theories in a row so that when the time comes and he eventually does lose, then he can just, you know, point to those things as the reason. And of course, his base is going to completely lap it up. So part of me thinks if he loses, it's actually going to be a worse thing because he just won't shut up. He'll just constantly be rabbing on. There will be a court case. It will just be tension on the streets. But then who knows? Maybe if he loses, people might just 
carry on and grow up and you know move on but i don't think that's going to happen too i think the leftists that have been opposed to his presidency from the very beginning will just try it will just you know immediately after he loses the you know as soon as they wake up from their drunken celebration the the, the morning after they're going to be trying to you know subpoena him get his tax returns um indict him for this and that for sure he's gonna he's gonna get you know f he's gonna get lawsuits coming out of his ears as soon as he leaves the office i'm sure because you know that whole you can't prosecute a sitting president blah 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 so there's pressure on both ends right he's he knows what's at stake because you know potentially he could he, his legacy could be completely tarnished he's not he's tarnished already because i reckon if he goes away and just kind of you know does his own thing people probably forget about him but if he does do what he what we think he's going to do <laughs> it's going to be a long 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 four years for people in the states but hey man what can you do in it it is what it is um let's get into some topics no point to waste more time some things that i've seen on the internet that i thought would be of interest to you so first things first we have this um <laughs> pretty odd reply from jamila jamila jamil a person who i got have, I have a lot of i won't say hatred but she's so frustrating so exhausting and just um a nonsense person in it someone that doesn't really i i can never really understand i don't really get where her, um i don't really get what her motivations are sometimes i don't really understand where it's coming from um it just seems to be a, a very uh self-absorbed person that just doesn't necessarily to take themselves probably way too seriously right and which is unnecessary considering you know her position in life considering what she's got going for her, there's no need to be so annoying basically but as according to a screenshot so essentially this is i think a screenshot from her instagram comments where i guess she was she posted a picture of her i think coming out of the shower or something right girls love to do that sort of thing right show themselves natural or oh, here's me natural without stuff right it's i don't know it's a girl thing i'm not going to try and understand it. it is what it is so someone in the comments commented and said hey your skin is so perfect and she replied normal reply right that someone would do my skin is currently clear because a privileged people have more access to good quality nutrition and also our lives are significantly less stressful than the lives of those who are less privileged i also get to sleep more because of this all of this keeps my hormones in balance and i'm able to address food intolerances easily like what why don't you just double tap the comment and keep it moving or just say thanks hun or a couple of kisses or a laughing face or crying face emoji whatever why do you need to give this person a whole thesis as i suppose as to why your skin is glowing no one cares generally no one cares for real for real no one cares and if anything the compliment has now been you've essentially rescinded the compliment you've taken it completely away right it's sort of like um uh it's all like that annoying person in that annoying friend you have in your friend group that can never really take a compliment or every time you talk about something great they've done they always spin it back into questioning why you were looking at them so much i don't know it's just such a weird way to go about things and then her next comment b <coughs> i believe trans right are humans right it's like what c i follow it twice a week why is this woman so and again maybe it's a symptom of our times right there is me maybe that sort of thing where especially now during lockdown right generally people have like lost this maybe sense of purpose right um especially if you i if you kind of if whatever job that you do is closely aligned with your identity and it kind of makes up who you actually are when that is taken away from you when you don't have the you know um the routine of getting up in the morning getting a coffee at a local coffee shop darting over to the train station flicking your hair in the mirror on the way as you go up the stairs um sitting down in your favorite seat on the train grabbing a metro jumping out the train station meeting at your friends outside the office or whatever routine that you have whatever thing that you do that makes you who you are during covid it's completely gone right so maybe this is the natural consequence of it you sit down and you reply to somebody who's asking you just a pretty innocuous question about your skin and you give them an entire thesis as to why your privilege allows you to have such glowing skin what privilege what are you talking about no one cares just tell her that you wash your face with cold water and you use bloody serums and shit like they don't care about all this privilege nonsense and again what does trans lives trans human rights count what is that because she said that she was trans remember when she got into some sticky situation and suddenly she came out as trans like what and now i explore it twice a week all right cool man two thumbs up to you i mean congrats 
it's just honestly one of the one of the most um exhausting people to um stumble upon you know when she's not spending most of her time you know screaming into the wind about the kardashians you know having flat belly tea and making it her mission to make all the girls on her that follow her to unfollow them it's just a bizarre and again i've always been curious this again this is just this is all women's business it's not my business and i don't really understand this stuff but it's always very curious to me how there is a portion of girls out there who follow women who are incredibly attractive right who have the genetic um, advantage in terms of being very slim very tall you know have the perfect kind of model figure and they somehow follow their workout routines they buy their food um their meal prep you know recipes and stuff i never really understood that because if the, if you're trying to tell me that you believe inherently that you could ever look like Jermaine and Jermaine, you're an ever, average everyday girl then there's something wrong with you right you might have some mental health issues if you think that's the case but there's so many of them that f they follow these really ripped especially some of the gymshark girls right they have like massive fan bases of just regular everyday women who are in love with these people right who kind of sit there and listen to these girls moaning about their breakup moaning about the lack of options that they have and you're just sitting if while you're eating your doritos looking at these girls thinking hold on you're a 10 even without makeup how the flip have you convinced these women that somehow you are you're like them in any way shape or form you're not you're not at all your dad's a bloody former gymnast your mom used to be in a question or whatever right ride horses you you won the genetic lottery right um you, you, you've been training in athlete in some sort of athletic pursuit since the age of six why would why would anybody want to buy your workout routine thing it's not going to work out the same way like you've been literally doing sit up since she was in the womb how's it how's your workout routine how's your um no gym equipment needed do it in your living room thing gonna help me it's just honestly bizarre you don't get that in like the men's world honestly you really don't you don't get a lot of dudes who like i don't know man it doesn't really happen that way like you should just you know you might follow your old guy here and there for a dumbbell workout or to, you know for something to improve your traps but you're not necessarily you know all in with their lifestyle thinking that somehow you are also going to be this you know ripped um skinny jean wearing guy that's going to turn up on love island you don't think that you just you know you follow them for the for the dumbbell workouts you might like their spotify playlist here and there that's about it but i don't know well, what this whole new era this new segment of influencers where they're really really attractive like former models or athletes who have kind of or actresses and stuff who have kind of you know decided to go to the public figure route and somehow they've um convinced regular everyday women that their their um lifestyle and their fitness um goals or their fitness you know in general is somehow achievable to the average everyday woman it's not it really isn't like they're in a league of their own and i guess in a way they they're they're and i think that's my theory in a way they're aware of this right jimmy Jim knows she's special right she's kind of been blessed in that department in the looks department in the genetics department um whatever it may be right you're blessed in that way so in order so you feel guilty about that in some way shape or form that you're kind of um grifting on your fan base right so in order to kind of seem somehow somewhat normal somehow regular you start to do all these weird social justice causes things you get behind black lives matter you pretend to be trans um you know you bemoan about you know your inability to comb your hair or something i don't know whatever nonsense right you just do something to try and relate to the average everyday woman so that it doesn't look like you're an alien but actually what actually makes those people special is the fact that they look like someone like a Naomi campbell she doesn't try and pretend like she's like some regular auntie on the street she lets you know that no i spend a lot of money on my face I spend a lot of money on my body i take care of myself i sleep nine hours a day in a hyper high, hyperbolic chamber whatever it may be right she goes out of her way to let you know that no i i'm not the same as you motherfuckers right i'm up here same with mariah carey right same with celine dion that's why these people are like icons and legends and queens and people follow them because they're so um freaky and everything that they do but this sort of like let me pretend i'm like a girl next door but i'm actually not because i live behind the gate thing is really bizarre and never really understood this and then there's all for jimmy jimmy she's the same person that kind of goes after and starts attacking the Kardashians. it's like you guys are the same people exactly the same people there's no moral high ground here if anything they're probably morally superior because they know exactly what they are and they just lean into it i was as opposed to you pretending you're some like what i don't know some 
I don't know, whatever it is, I'm not a fan of it, man. She she does my nut to me. She grinds my gears, as I say, in Family Guy. Grinds my bloody gears. Next on the list here, we have this uh, pretty funny story regarding Alyssa Milano, another um, very questionable female icon. <laughs> um, she's been ragging on and kind of complaining and screaming about, you know, defunding the police in America, which has kind of been a weird, it's, it's a weird phrase anyway, right? It's a weird thing. Whenever, whenever someone pushes back on it, the people that, that kind of push you are like, no, we don't mean actually get rid of the police. We mean reform it. But it's like, why would you call, why, why would you say it's defund the police if you're trying to reform it? So it's obviously some, it's, it's obviously some sort of misdirect on purpose. Right. But regardless, she's very anti, anti cop, especially since, you know, the spout of police brutality um you know documented ones in the states and she's just made it her mission to kind of you know keep reminding you that she wants to defund the police in some way shape or form until something happens to her on her own doorstep and guess what she guess who she needs to call the police so she got into some incident which says here from page six it says the cops were called to Alyssa Milano's home over a squirrel shooter right <laughs> uh a weekend 9-11 call to the California home of actress and defund the police supporter Lisa Milano sparked a massive emergency response over what turned out to be someone shooting a squirrels with an air gun. Now, don't get me wrong. To be fair to her, you know, look, you know, you're in your home doing your Pilates, scanning your phone. You look out of the window of your of your massive, massive, you know, um, hidden hills garden, and then you spot some guy in black, you know, in a black outfit looking like the zodiac killer you know rummaging through your bushes of course call the police but for somebody that's been you know saying we need to reform stuff and all that blah, 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 blah. come on um seven um ventura sheriff's vehicles and a canine unit and a police helicopter and a los angeles fire department unit descended on the charm stars <laughs> socal sprawl sunday morning according to daily mail look at that unit sheriff canine unit helicopter fire that's privilege right and, and that's and that's the irony of this you say defund the police because literally you live behind a gate in a gated community right you live behind, you live in a gated community and you also have a gate in front of your own place and you also have the ability you have some sort of like um speed dial hotline that allows you to get um you know um police response police to respond basically to a distress call quicker than they would anywhere else where you know anywhere else in the state of california it's a maddening absolutely maddening so it's always, you know, as as always with these people, um, these privileged elites who, you know, go on as if they're um, fighting for the regular everyday folk in the street. It's one rule for you, for us, and it's one rule for them, basically. Um, it continues, it says, we first noticed a helicopter circling overhead very low and knew something was going on. It's usually such a great quiet community, says one neighbor, Milano told the outlet. One neighbor of Milano told the outlet. Then we saw all the police cars parked in front of Milano's Alice's uh, house. Um, they had their guns out and ready and seemed very serious. A neighbor made the call, initial call to 911, uh, sorry, and Milano's talent agent husband, Dave Bugalari, followed up according to authorities in a statement issued by Milano. Now, part of me thinks, you know, if somebody, this is probably a, a really meatheady thing to say, but if you're in your home somewhere and your wife tells you that she sees someone in the garden, you're a dude, you probably might want to check first, isn't it? Right? Because I, I, I'm not den you know I'm not denying the fact that maybe she might be somebody. I would imagine she might be somebody that may have, might have suffered from stalkers in the past, right? She might have had some very troubling experiences with men wearing dark, you know, um, uniforms walking around her premises, right? It's probably not fun being listening to London nowadays, right? You probably get some freaks and weirdos trying to come near you and your family at all times, right? I understand that, but. There is also that idea that maybe in that kind of panic, when you're sort of worried and scared, you might just see stuff that isn't normally there. So maybe asking somebody else that lives in your home, your husband maybe, or whatever else is in there to say, hey, am I going crazy or did you see someone in the garden? Because there's two of you anyway, right? It's not as if like, you know, you're on your own. If you're on your own, immediately call the police, you know, lock all the doors and whatever it may be. But if you're with your husband, you at least let him know and then he should go out there and check. But nah, he also called the police. So not only is she defunding the police, the husband has also went to defund the police, but they're doubly calling them. It's like, God almighty. And I'm sure maybe those two, it was it three calls altogether. The neighbor called the police. She called the police. The husband called the police. 
maybe the dog call the police as well. Like, no wonder they got there so quickly. On Sunday morning, as we were all getting ready, it says here to watch the Giants game. Our neighbor spotted, okay, that's a statement. Da, da, da. The couple reportedly told deputies that the sound scared the dogs and that responding officers should look for a man in his 40s with a long rifle. <laughs> After roughly a three hour search, the cops concluded the culprit was shooting an air gun at squirrels. Um, no charges were filed or citation issues, according to the Ventura City Department. And just imagine having what what house do you live in right where you have your neighbors you know what walking near your garden i'm not even sure where the limits of a garden are but looking for squirrels that's when you know you're living like you're living well right you're living so far up right you know your altitude is so high that you somehow have squirrels rummaging around for nuts for pine nuts whatever they bloody eat and then you've got a guy there with a long rifle on a random day in a week trying to hunt them right and what post them on his instagram like cam haynes right sitting next to a squirrel like he's like he's killed a lion or something no charges were filed or citations issued according to the ventura county sheriff's department um over the summer milano was one of the several celebrities and politicians to voice their support for the defund the police movement which gained momentum following the memorial death um of george floyd in minneapolis a spokesman for, for Milano disputed the version of events and of course she put out her own statement which was hilarity and here's her on Twitter then complaining about the issue right so imagine you you would think they had some sort of like sense of humor like imagine yeah I'm the guy that's always talking about defund the police and then suddenly now I'm bringing the police it should be you know you should be able to take the piss out of yourself be like you know what I'm ridiculous but instead no use it as another opportunity to, to claim the victim um apparently she says here right-wing media trolls have decided that they should target me because my neighbor called the police after seeing a person dressed in black holding a rifle behind my house where i live with my young children and husband like there's such a they've got such a great way of sounding like they're always in distress isn't it that just sounds like tension that sounds like anxiety in it that whole entire sentence there's one there's one comma right at the beginning here apparently and the rest of it is just one run-on sentence and you're like <laughs> and here's my statement and what really happened so here's one script or here's what she said on sunday morning as we were all getting ready to watch the giants game yeah right she watches the giants game get out of here she's probably sitting on twitter the whole day while she's husband's watching the giants game trying again another attempt to sound regular girl next door i like watching football mm, all right our neighbor spotted a man dressed in all black <laughs> walking in the woods between our properties and a gun <laughs> you know it would have been really funny it would have been a really really curious um uh, it would have been a really curious intellectual problem for her, right? To kind of come across. Imagine if the guy that had the rifle hunting squirrels was black. What would she have done? <laughs> would she have called the police? <laughs> uh, that would have been hilarious. Anyways, as that is a rare sight in our parts, the neighbor was understandably alarmed and she called the police. And when they received a call alerting us, to the potential situation that officers have been dispatched my husband subsequently called the police again 9 11 to check on where the police would be arriving right so as you're getting as your husband's getting stabbed in the neck by some squirrel hunting um all black wearing ninja yeah he's checking up and saying hey are you guys going to be there in a minute like he's checking up on an uber um while he was on the line they arrived and where was she hiding behind the city somewhere um responding officers were amazing and made my family and i feel safe secure and as we were sheltered in place like until we knew exactly what was happening after searching the woods for some time a man who fit the description called the police himself to say that he'd been hunting squirrels in the area <laughs> apologize for the commotion <laughs> imagine these little bloody cute squirrels cause all this commotion man um and who and who bloody hunts a squirrel with a rifle that's mad, isn't it? Like, is that how you have to kill a squirrel? With a bloody rifle? Like you're in bloody Saving Private Ryan or something? Like, mad. I would like to thank the brave men and women in Ventura County Sheriff, as well as all the other officers who came to protect and serve our neighborhood. Yeah, all right. And then um, these are exactly the type of situation that officers are trained for and should be responding to. So now she's now, um, break, she's now kind of uh, detailing when and where police should be, right? They should, you know, um, when somebody's in my garden hunting squirrels, yes. When a black man's getting his head pounding on the pavement, no. It's like, what? Um, and we'll also support police having resources they need for appropriate police action. We'd love to see equally trained non-police professionals respond to the addiction and mental health crisis and non-violent events so that these brave officers can do their jobs as so good at handling as they demonstrate this weekend. So you, you're, what you're telling me is that you'd much rather have what? mental health police specialists on the streets 
in troubled neighborhoods, riveted by poverty and crime, but then you want police officers with guns and canines and a direct line to the fire brigade for a fucking squirrel. These people, man, they have no, they have, the, they have no class. They have no class, man. She's an absolute psycho. But again, we have to love her for it because she provides entertainment for the world all over. Next on the list here. What else do we have? Ooh, yeah. Did you did you um tune into uh Tesla Battery Day? That was a pretty fun and eventful evenings or afternoons worth of information. Um Elon Musk and Co. decided to do a battery day. I'm not sure if they do it all the time. Um, but essentially they gave an update on battery production, battery innovation that goes into the Teslas, um, and loads of geeky good stuff about, you know, uh efficiency production uh, manufacturing new factories and all that good stuff but the absolutely key bit to come out of it was this amazing lineup of um vehicles that are due to come out in tesla well to the mass market in the future or sometime in the future and i have it here on the screen we have the cyber truck to our this closest to the screen we have the atv um we have the roadster and then we have um what's it called what do you call the big truck i've got the big truck is but the tesla, the tesla semi that's what the semi and the one thing that stuck out to me straight away was obviously i think since we've seen the cyber truck debut you know um they basically changed the finish of it i'm not sure if they've buffed it or if they've shot or if this is how it's going to come production wise but you remember the when they present when elon presented it on the stage it was a little bit more matte it was a little bit more dulled of a finish, a little bit more of a rustic industrial sort of Rick Owens type, you know, feel towards it. But now they've really um, buffed up the panels and made it extremely, extremely shiny. And it looks incredible. It looks really, really nice. And the more I see this pickup truck, the more I think it's going to be probably one of the most, if not the most popular kind of um, what pickups that you're going to see all over the streets, especially in major metropolitan cities for a long, long time. There's literally nothing on the market that looks like it it looks so incredible especially when you start seeing people customize it with different sort of wraps or different paint finishes that would be really interesting too i'm not sure how easy it is to spray paint um stainless steel i'd imagine it is pretty easy to do whether you have to treat it whether not that kind of um damages its uh what's its kind of its properties because i guess part of the reason why they designed it in this way was that it was kind of all built out of one piece or kind of limited amount of pieces so you didn't need to have a huge production line in order to assemble it so i don't know what will happen if you did decide to spray paint it but i love the finish i love 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 the finish and again the rims i weren't really a fan of these little caps i can't i would kind of like them to be a bit more exposed but i'm starting to get um I'm starting to like that. I like the fact that the actual pickup bit on the back is sort of concealed. It's sort of like, yeah, it's kind of concealed from the side. If anything, if you look from it, you just assume it just the seats carried on there, but it's got a massive area for you to pick up on. The ATV, I'm really curious to see what would happen with that. So far, I think Elon mentioned they're only going to be available with the Cybertruck. I think it's an option that you can kind of add on, but they're not going to be sold separately. And part of the reason is because I think he's had a very bad experience with motorbikes. I'm not too sure if it's a member of his family that passed away from a motorcycle accident or something on those lines. But I really do think there's a really good opportunity for Tesla to make a really great motorbike, a scooter or something. I think that'll be very popular or even an e-bike or something of, the, of, of that ilk, I think would work really well. But, you know, maybe they have other longer bigger loftier goals on direct and of course the roadster which looks tiny compared to the cyber truck i'm not sure sure if it's actually this small in general right or if it just looks if it's just dwarfed by the size of the cyber truck but it's so so small so so compact um it like it, 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 you know what is it zero to 60 seconds in 1.5 seconds or something stupid like that and then of course the tesla semi which is you know the the vehicle that has been long tesla semi is a similar to like ai right it's kind of been spoken in hushed terms as being the industry killer is going to take away jobs and all this sort of stuff and it's going to change the economy forever but it's pretty expensive for what it is i don't think a lot of companies are going to there's not a lot of no, there's actually some big companies that have put in some orders for the Tesla Semi. And let me not say that. I do remember seeing some very big companies um decide to put an order in. But I think by the time there won't be, I don't think you'll see a mass extinction of, you know, regular 
uh, semi trucks and stuff. They're still going to exist the gasoline options, but it'd be interesting to see other car manufacturers decide. Hey, maybe it might be a better option, especially if some of the if some of their contracts or some of their clients decide to jump over and change manufacturers and go to Tesla. It'll be interesting to see some of these um, car manufacturers react and say, "Hey, you know what? We need to jump on board and make our own electric um, semi truck in some way, shape, or form." But yeah, that lineup is just gorgeous, man. Like, and really does. And again, it's just it's just funny and illuminating to see, like you know, whilst we're all you know, again, myself included, whilst we're all arguing on Twitter and debating about who slept with who and who tweeted what, Elon Musk is over there essentially um, carving out the future and providing us with a sustainable way to get from A to B, right? Um, essentially, you know, if you believe in um, climate change, this guy's doing more for climate change than either you or I, right? We're placing bloody milk cartons in a bloody bin somewhere in a certain hole, thinking that we're doing the world justice. And this guy is here creating and changing industries, you know, with these weird cars that he decides to manufacture. Like, it's really, really inspiring, man. But again, that Tesla Semi is just beautiful. It re I mean, sorry, this Tesla Cybertruck is just amazing to look at, especially once it's been like shined up and buffed. I can't can't wait to see that in person once it does you know um hit production i think he mentioned actually in the in the um, presentation for the battery day that supposedly they have over half a million sales they've stopped counting now i think i think he last counted they were just over six hundred thousand. um what pre-orders right and i think the pre-orders was like what a hundred dollars or something right you put down to secure your um tesla i think they're going to start shipping next year or going to manufacturing next year so end up shipping in 2022 if i'm not mistaken so there's still a long way for you us to for anybody to actually see one in irl but bloody hell man half a million just with the strength of a presentation um on stage you know mad to see man mad to see mad to see I would actually like to get one myself. I think the the one thing testers have done for me, they've kind of gave me a bit of a stretch moon, uh, a bit of a goal in terms of cars to get. I've never really been a big car dude, but you know, you can't not see a Cybertruck or a Tesla Model 3, Model S, or not think, you know what, it'll be amazing if my first car could be something like that, especially because they're automatic and they're electric. They'll be like, it'd be like driving a go kart. Do you know what I mean, it'll be bloody so much fun to drive. And whenever you see videos of people driving it for the first time, you know, that acceleration always kind of brings a smile to everyone's face. So that'd be a great thing. You know, imagine first whip is a bloody Tesla. That'd be amazing, man. Imagine that vibe, you know, but you never know. Watch this space. That might happen. Moving on to more distressing news. Um, I guess distressing and fun news. So obviously I've been talking a lot about these Union Jordan 4s, right? I love them. Jordan 4s are probably one of my favorite models, right? Top five sneakers for me, uh, you know, in no particular order. I'd say Air Force Ones, Air Max 90, Jordan 4. Uh, what's my other one? Air Max 90, uh, Jordan, yeah, Air Max 90, Jordan 4, Air Max 90, Jordan 4, Air Force One, uh, Dr. Martin 1460. I don't know what the other one was, but anyway, they're in my top five of shoes. So I'm a big fan of them. And um, one of my favorite colorways to come out this year was this pack that Union put together, right? They've got a guava pair and this noir pair. Um, I like the fact that they've basically flipped the panels around. They've extended some bits. They've left the webbing on some places. They've turned them inside out. They've changed the tongue. Um, they've got this sort of like, you know, off-white, you know, this sort of distressed colored yellow midsole that reminds me of Jordans that you pluck out of some vintage mum and pop store somewhere. So some really cool elements added to it, right? In general, just a very cool trainer. And again, it's it's interesting because usually, especially with some of the hype, the hyper shoes that have come out nowadays, are the limited edition ones. The more limited edition it is, the more loopy and crazy the design is, and some people just buy it for the sake of it just being you know rarely available and not really for the actual aesthetic appeal of it and i guess this union Jordan 4 is one of the rare exam examples of that right where it's a rare shoe but it's also a shoe that can be worn day to day and just looks great and i think you have to give a shout out to union in general for being really good at doing that i think um the, the union jordan one i've seen worn by so many people on the streets every day you know various different people from you know various walks of life which is definitely a good indication on um the success and actually the beauty of the shoe that you put together i think it's all easy you know anyone can you know decide to paint by numbers on a trainer but to make a shoe that appeals to you know geeks like myself and regular everyday people that just happen to pop into Dover Street Market when it was being sold is a real testament to the design ability of you know whoever put it together but 
obviously you know buying these shoes is always a bit of a bitch right it's always a pain in the ass essentially you're having to enter a lottery for a chance to purchase something with your own hard-earned money it's absolutely ridiculous i hated it i've always hated it from the beginning especially since they kind of took away the, the ability to queue and buy stuff in in store the queuing element of it reminded me of the you know when the first iphone launched and then subsequent iphones came out the the first day that they dropped they always sold out they're hard to get but then you know as time goes and people start to get their own iphone they increase production and more brands start to order more you're eventually going to get one right so there's no need for you to buy one you remember back in the day when there'd be people reselling iphones right what that they purchased what because they waited in line at the store and then they resell it for like you know three times its value it doesn't happen anymore unless you're that person that's really desperate to get it on the day it comes out if you just wait a week you wait a couple of days you'll get it no problem no questions asked but obviously with shoes it's not like that and for some reason no one really has any questions about it no one's annoyed by it no one tries to kind of force or try to uh um put the kind of sneaker manufacturers in the corner and get them to answer the question as to why they can't just manufacture more why can't they just make stuff more readily available why can't they um allow a a, a more fair not a fairer but a way that kind of allows people like myself that aren't necessarily on the app and don't have bots and aren't trolling social media to get a shoe just to kind of be able to buy it and i guess that's the annoying part once you once you kind of especially being a sneakerhead the, the bad thing about being a sneakerhead is that it kind of never leaves you right even if i don't buy as many shoes as i did in the past you can never quite let go of it it's always kind of a thing the little itch that you always have but then this the annoying thing is that the older you get the less patient and the less willing you are to sit on your phone um, have your your Chrome, you know, your laptop open on Chrome, have another tablet open up on Firefox, refreshing and hoping to get a shoe, hoping to get a chance to buy something. It just isn't a lick, especially when you have disposable income, especially if you earn money, right? That You just don't want that hassle. So that's why places like StockX, you know, exist and they probably thrive off that, right? Because there are people out there who just don't want the hassle. They'd rather just pay some kid to go queue up, pay three times the value and just keep it moving, right? It is what it is. If you like the shoe, it doesn't matter if it's probably a 90 pound or 300 pound, right? You just want to get it. But sometimes I get annoyed at that, the ability to not buy it. And then I also get annoyed at the pricing, right? There is no reason why these Union Jordan 4 should be 210, right? The last time I bought a pair of Jordan 4s, I'm pretty sure I spent like 190, 180. Why are these 210? What's, what's the rationale? So they don't increase production. Well, they don't, well, they did to increase the quantity, I think, with these a little bit, but they don't give you an explanation as to why they're more. You just have to kind of suck it up and buy them. And then obviously trying to buy them is going to be difficult because they're not going to be available in a lot of places. You're going to have to like, you know, as as End is displaying here, you're going to have to register your interest, which I obviously have done for them because, you know, they're bloody beautiful, but it's just so annoying. It's honestly one of the most annoying parts of buying sneakers, getting them and, you know, the shipping that is all good you know customer service bloody blah, blah blah most stores know what they're doing but the actually acquiring of them the the wit you know the ability to give your money to somebody for them to give you a shoe back is just so 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 annoying it just takes time you have to you know invest in bots you have to follow some certain accounts some people do that annoying thing where you have to follow somebody at your friend in the comments like the picture share it on your twitter and your facebook um send the link to your mum. like it's just take a selfie with the thing it's just annoying right it's just all annoying and i'm really wondering like when will this ever change when will we get to a point where you can just buy something like a shooter this comes out and don't get me wrong it's not like you can make a million of these because it might lose a pill or whatever it's limited edition but at least have the ability to for somebody at least maybe have the ability to buy it for a longer period of time than just a day than just a weekend it makes no sense it just makes no sense and again it's not really a resellers thing resellers i don't care i mean do, do you have to do everyone's got to make their money right um I, I essentially put myself through university by reselling so i don't have any problem with that but it's just for average regular everyday folks like myself who just want to buy some cool shoes to wear and it just happens to be sometimes, you know, the core cool shoes that you want are the ones that are limited edition, which is annoying. Um, especially now, I think they've realized a lot of the brands are quite, have basically clued on that you don't just make collaborations now better because they don't just go around collaborating with everybody. They collaborate with the brands that sort of have, they have a bit of brand synergy with, they sort of line up with, you know, in terms of tone and in terms of, you know, appeal and aesthetic, right? They sort of line up with the brands really well. And then they give them usually, um, 
the free reign to do what they want with the item and most brands kind of want to appeal to their audience but also reach out to a new group of buyers so they try and make something that kind of you know appeases both audiences and usually if you're you know i don't think there's been re very rarely have you have i seen a collaboration in the last five or so years that's been complete dog shit usually they have some kind of appeal i can understand why people would like that thing so that of course increases the likelihood of me not getting a pair because everyone else wants them you know so it's just i don't know man it's just it's one of the most frustrating parts of buying shoes like you can just never buy them there's always like again i've got my entry day there's always some lottery system you have to do some raffle nonsense and again i just long for the days of queuing get done going wrong queuing was annoying right i probably couldn't do it now but that waking up in the early in the morning getting your camping chair out sitting down in a queue with your friends making new friends um posting queue pictures and updates on a forum it was all it was all fun and it was all amazing and again sometimes you woke up late you got to shop and it was sold out and you were completely okay with it because you went to a store to go buy something it wasn't available but this idea of sitting at home and waiting for an email to come through to your inbox to tell you you've got a chance to buy a shoe make sure you buy it in an hour window or we give it to somebody else it's just it's just a nonsense but i'm just so over it i really really am um and which is why i've kind of purposely made it my mission to kind of you know always try and look for stuff that isn't necessarily the limited edition stuff that's the benefit of sneakers nowadays because you know the sneaker culture is a billion dollar industry they make a lot of shoes now so generally you can even if you don't find if you're not able to get the limited edition thing you can usually find some pretty good shoes at most you know kind of fashiony retailers they usually have a good selection of trainers that you can buy that aren't necessarily limited edition but are pretty decent and maybe a step above stuff that you might find on nike.com or new balance you know website wherever it may be but man i wish the process of buying shoes was a lot easier than it is now but hey i guess that's part of the game isn't it i guess that's part of the game moving on we have a little update regarding my man brian callan and jen Curtin. so i'm sure you're all aware at the moment Callan's going through he's going through it right he's going through a real big he's got a big issue to kind of deal with he's fighting these sexual assault allegations his career has been derailed he's not on his podcast you know Joe Rogan doesn't mention him anymore. He can't do stand up. It's all it's all gone Pete Tong. And then off the back of that, this lady called Jen Jen Kirkman is also a comedian who has a special on Netflix now at the moment. You should go check it out. It's pretty funny to be honest. She's decided to make her mission to basically hold him accountable for the crimes that she thinks that he has basically committed. At the moment it's all alleged. No he hasn't been, you know, uh, judged in a court of law and all that sort of malarkey, but I guess if you're a Jen Kirkman and you're a female comedian that maybe comes from the old scene or whatever it may be, she probably has some genuine um, grievances uh, to bear. And maybe Callan represents everything that she hates about the comedy scene at the moment. So he might just be a unfortunate a victim of consequence right it probably isn't personal it's probably just a thing of like hey she's had enough of you know all these men the patriarchy taking her shots taking her positions you know effing over her friends and whatever it may be or trashing her scene whatever it is right she generally is she generally it feels like she generally has a axe to grind with the whole uh, comedy scene in general and unfortunately Callan is a sacrificial lamb so of course i've not been a fan of his approach i think he's not really dealt with it right way he's not really resolved it in the right way of course i know some people have mentioned in the comments oh how is he gonna f um clear his name allegations are more than 20 years old yeah i get it but there's a way to carry yourself there's a way to kind of handle it in public that would maybe um grant you some sort of sympathy that would maybe allow you to be more emotionally sensitive and aware of what's going on to be a little bit of tact i don't know what it is but I don't think, you know, setting up a Patreon podcast, talking about conspiracy is another one where you kind of badger on about societal issues whilst you've got these allegations hanging over your head and then deciding to announce a bloody nationwide tour is the right way to go about things. So far, from my experience or from what I know and from what I've seen, I don't think there's been a single person who's been quote unquote cancelled, especially no, not cancelled, who's had these serious sexual assault allegations. Cancel is different. I think cancel you can deal with it that way. I think if you have sexual assault allegations, I don't think there's anyone, right, that's been me too, that's kind of gone about it the way that he has, Callan, and and won. I don't think it exists. I think maybe the the kind of the closest example might be Jeremy Piven when he was accused of some, you know, some sexual 
whatever misgivings that he'd done to somebody and essentially his whole what i think he had a series a tv show about cell preachers or something that he essentially got i think something got canned but he wasn't able to go to the premiere and some other shows i'm pretty sure in the background that he probably got scrapped off of and then he suddenly turned into a stand-up comedian right but his own job that he actually does i think that he excels at in terms of acting he wasn't able to do and he hasn't able to be able to do since right and he tried to kind of you know he kind of went on the front foot um made a tweet put out some you know some uh press releases and basically category denied the allegations but he still did it with a bit more tact than Callan did. At the moment, I get, I get it. Callan's fighting for his life, you know, fighting for the future of his family. He wants to go back to doing what he does best. But I just think there's a better way to go about doing this than just, you know, starting a podcast on Patreon with Sam Tripoli ranting about conspiracy theories and then deciding to go and tour. It just doesn't look right. I mean, it just doesn't look right. And I guess some of these women, especially Jane Kirkman, that's what that might be one of their triggers. And then, of course, you know, um, Jen said what she said, which I mentioned in the other podcast about her kind of ranting about, you know, uh, men wanting to be allies, but then doing what they're doing now and basically not holding um, people like Canon accountable or the clubs accountable. And I guess Canon saw that tweet and that message from her and decided enough is enough and decided to publicly um, comment. Right. And publicly kind of replied to Jen Kirkman and basically say, hey, what's the deal? What's your problem? And I don't have an issue with this. I just think, again, he's. For somebody that kind of, because this is the issue, if you listen to, to T5K, you'd know Callan hates all this stuff, right? He, he hates um, social justice warriors. Um, he kind of has a, a axe to grind with, you know, some women coming out and making allegations about a certain person 20 years after. He has some very questionable opinions when it comes to sort of stuff, but he should be more than aware that um, people that like this that come after you at this sort of fashion, they don't want to sit down with you. They don't want to have a conversation. They just want to end your career. And again, maybe Jane Kirkman isn't doing that. And she can say, no, I'm not actually doing that. I want to hold him accountable. But for what I've seen from these people, especially, you know, they have a general, they have a, a an actual grievance, right? They generally think that men in the industry that they're in have for, for a long period of time have, you know, uh, been running amok, doing exactly what they want. And now is the time to hold them accountable. And if they're, and if they have an opportunity to do so, they're not going to let go until you are done. And I think the only way I've seen it work, um, and if I can't think of somebody that's worked in their favor where they've been able to turn it around, it, ha it doesn't happen. So Brian Callan did try to reach out across the aisle and have some sort of civil discourse and Jen Kirkman completely shot him down. But he said, hey, Jen Kirkman, why don't you come to my podcast and we can actually <laughs> meet and talk? I'd love to discuss why you are so passionately invested in destroying the life of somebody you don't know based on solely on hearsay. That's a real offer. And again, let's look at it honestly, right? Nothing good will come out of them sitting down together and having a conversation because... You know, you can't trust Brian Callan to, number one, be um, civil enough to have that kind of conversation because essentially his livelihood's at risk. Um, he feels like he's been personally attacked. I'm sure of it. Um, there's no way you can have a conversation um, with, in such a heat, in such a hot button topic, right? And have it to be any way civil. It's always going to turn into a shouting match. And again, once it turns into a shouting match, he immediately loses, right? It is what it is. And in Jen Kirkman's side of things, she doesn't need to sit down with him, right? Essentially, she's exercising her own freedom of speech. If, if Brian Callan feels it okay to go out there and tell people that, hey, I'm going to put on a show, she should be, she's within her right, even though I don't agree with how she's going about it, to essentially go out and say, hey, why are these clubs booking him if he's got these allegations over his head? They both, they both can do what they need to do, right? The issue here, I guess, is that unfortunately, we're in a position where there is no way it looks like at the present moment for either party to move on. It just doesn't, I don't see how it can happen. Callan can't essentially prove that he's innocent. Um, the women that have been maybe um, victims of this crime can't essentially prove it happened really categorically in a court of law. Um, and then a person like Jen Kirkman who thinks um, Brian Callan represents everything she hates about the comedy scene can't really make any kind of long-term gain or change in the industry because unfortunately no one cares. That's the actual sad bit about everything, right? Because even if, let's imagine Callan did what um, he's accused of, right? And he is a rapist and he is a sexual abuser, whatever. Right? Let's, let's imagine this is true. What's actually going to happen? He's not going to go to prison. He's not going to lose his career. 
he won't disappear from the limelight he'll still be around you'll still see him at comedy clubs you'll still be attending the circuit doing what he does maybe in a reduced capacity but he'll still be around and whatever lack of opportunity Jen Kirkman thinks she does have it'll continue happening because what will happen in Hollywood because Hollywood's annoying like that they'll just look at all these tweets and all this kind of public you know spats that she's having with comedians they'll just make it they'll just kind of make the conclusion that she's difficult and hard to deal with and they'll just completely distance themselves from her so this is going to serve it that's a sad thing about it it benefits absolutely no one the victims lose brian cannon loses jen kirkman loses the comedy scene loses at large and of course us fans we lose because we don't get the ability to see you know kellen back on the podcast or jen kirkman doing what she does best you know without having all this stuff in the back of her mind it really is stressful and then to further carry on with this and you know to make this even more ridiculous, Ken decided to get on Instagram and give out a message to his fans, let them know that he is trying his best to get back on the podcast or whatever it may be. And again, ill advised, why is he doing this? I don't know. Um, who is he responding to? Who is he even talking to when he makes his messages? Like, you have these serious allegations over your head. The future of your family is at stake. Your reputation has been, you know, decimated in public you should be doing all you can to prove your innocence or whatever it may be or just you know to bring these women to the table so you can discuss something whatever i don't know what the solution is this is not my job to find out to give you ideas right or to give anybody ideas i'm just saying do people honestly think this is the right way to go about dealing with this do you honestly think this is the right way to address it do you honestly think this is the best way to um not even honor the victim but to um uh acknowledge and understand what's going on is it really the best way to go about doing it i probably don't think not but hey what do i know let's play the clip uh brian cullen addressing the t5k fans hey guys um this is for my fighter and the kid fans um i know you guys are wondering where i've been why i'm not on a podcast believe me i want to be back on the podcast i plan on being back on the podcast brendan wants me back on the podcast but right now, our professional relationships just will not allow it. And it's. And that's funny, right? Professional relationships won't allow it. That's the irony of their situation. There was a period in time in TFK history and TFK law when they were kind of, you know, when the common thing, when, the, um, when they went through what they were going through with Fox, they had a bit of a falling out because kind of, I think Brian, Brendan said something, I don't know. And they essentially had to uh, part ways. And part of the victory speech was oh we get to do our thing on our own we're independent we don't have a higher ups all they gave us was a studio and evan the beard now we get to do it on our own but quite quickly because they wanted to secure the bag and because they weren't willing to you know do the hard work and grunt they decided to sign up with i guess cast media who are their essentially employers um or their bosses in that respect and now cast media are basically um preventing brian callum from appearing on his own show that they built with their own two hands and again they can on i can say even as a fan that yes fox did help them but these guys built that podcast on the ground up themselves they essentially um were the reason why you have all these podcasts up at the moment now with like a comedian and a fighter right they basically started that trend and now they're in a position where they are essentially working for the equivalent of a cbs right they're essentially working for the equivalent of a HBO where they basically told who they can have on. They're basically, they probably, I'm assuming cast media gives them suggestions on guests. They help them to put the show out, maybe to get producers, maybe to, you know, increase their reach, uh, sponsors, marketing, all that good stuff. But then on the backside of it, once they get in trouble, the same platform that they have to talk to their fans, they can't utilize it to galvanize their, their, their fan base or to defend themselves they can't use it so instead he has to run away to you know behind a paywall on patreon and you know speak on it there where no one really is paying attention or where no one really cares or essentially just lose your career off the back of the one deal that you're making it's really really funny that that happened that way and again so unfortunate it sucks um but um trust me i'm i'm doing everything i can uh i'm, I'm still doing the patreon thing what can you do? There's nothing you can do. If Carl says no, it's no. What honestly can he do to change the fact that he can't go back on his show? And again, how's this is the problem is all for it. Even though, you know, I think the recent show they did with Malik and um, Chappelle, yeah, that was really good. But for the most part, the co-hosts have been a bit meh, you know. The beauty of T-Fat Cave, like it or lump it, is Brendan Schaub and Brian Callan without, you know, Callan on there. It's, a, it's not what it was. You're not really getting the full product. So to be in this position now where you can't go back on your show, you can't go defend yourself, you have to 
go on the road to make to make the bucks and do what you have to do but then that's also um, exposing you and making you a target for people to you know uh regurgitate some of these stories and allegations it's just oh yeah 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 thing but i plan on being back in the meantime i'm gonna be on the road this month i'll be in india i'll see you in india i'll see you in columbus i'll see you in kansas city i'll see you in dallas i'll see you in orlando um and uh, so thank you. Thank you so much for sticking with me here. Uh, but there's just stuff I got to take care of and I will take care of it. Yeah, you got to take care of the bills. And again, I just think it's all time. He should have never announced. He should have never announced the dates in public. If he was going to go and do a tour, he should have just put the dates out. He just should have let the clubs put the dates out there and kept it moving. But obviously he needs to sell tickets because he's not a big enough name to just have a date go up and if it's to sell out. You know, he's, that doesn't that isn't the case, unfortunately, for him, especially during this time where he's been out of the limelight. I'm sure some or even just with the allegations, I'm sure some genuine fans have basically fallen out of love with his comedy or wanting to see him. So you've lost a, a, probably a big portion of your fan base due to the allegations alone. And then on top of that, people just, you know, the attention span goes somewhere else once you're kind of not in front of their face anymore. So you kind of have to promote it. You kind of have to put it out on your socials that you perform. But then the moment you put it out on your on your socials, people like Jen Kirkman and her friends so see and like, what? How dare you? Right? And then they start calling up the clubs, deciding to, you know, basically questioning why they're booking you and essentially trying to cancel you in real time, even though, you know, Jen says she's not canceling him. That is what cancellation is. And then talking about cancellation, another development of it to end it quickly is um, Callan is now suing not the accusers of said allegations, the people that are basically women that have kind of come out and detailed some of the experiences they've had with Brian Callan allegedly. She's instead suing the husband of one of the accusers because i guess this guy went out of his way to call each comedy club that he's meant to be performing at and basically question the managers as to why they decided to book him at their club which is again you can understand it if he truly believes um his wife um account of what happened you can understand the rage you would feel as a partner to do all you can to destroy whoever did whatever he is accused of doing to his wife but god almighty again this is just brian's own doing it's his own doing if he would have dealt if he would have addressed and tried to resolve the issue it with some kind of level of um, humility with some kind of level of maturity this wouldn't have happened but instead he thought he was above it he thought he could somehow skirt around it um I don't know, he thought a statement or two, a strongly worded tweet would basically, um, you know, uh, convince all the attack dogs to, to, you know, to back off. And that's not how it happens, honestly. And he should know this more than anyone. He's one of the people that kind of keeps raging on about the, the perils of council culture, you know, and he has no idea of how to kind of address it in the right way. But again, we continue. There's an article from TMZ. His comedian Brian Callan claims his rape accuser's husband is waging a war to destroy his livelihood as an actor and a stand up comedian for intimidation. So he claims a new law. So I shouldn't be laughing, but God almighty, man, what a what a way to end it, right? What a way to end the year for these guys. They have a successful podcast, his business is flipping booming, then suddenly COVID hits. No, what is it? Well, Callan, well, how's it go? Um, divorce from your child's mother again, you know, maybe, you know, time things change, you know, people uh, split up and they move in separate directions you split up you decide to get your lids redone because you're you know self-conscious and you want to prolong your hollywood career you suddenly get a spot in a really big movie but then you get one and a half seconds you know people seeing your back in the joker you secure your own what spin-off show right you're suddenly you're, you're, you're suddenly starting to get some momentum in the industry uh, everything's going where it's going and then covid hits and suddenly you and your co-host turn into covid deniers you turn you turn off your entire fan base um everyone's now wishing death on you when you get the, the, when you get the virus and now you're in a situation where um these past flings or encounters that you had with women 20 years ago have now turned out to not be what you remember them to be god almighty what a way to end the year. Um, Callum, best known for his role in The Hangover and Goldbergs, is suing Gabriel Tigerman, the husband of Catherine Fjord Tigerman, who recently publicly accused Callum of raping her back in 1999. Callum claims uh, since the accusations came to light, Gabriel's been on the war path to destroy his career through threats, harassment, and intimidation. Now, I guess obviously the Gabriel guy, I understand your anger, but you can't be going up, you know, and calling these bloody clubs yourself, you know, giving your name, your DLs and questioning your public. That's, that's just too much, isn't it? Even if you think the person's guilty, it should just go through the court of law. But again, if this guy kind of would have treated these allegations with any kind of um, humility, I'm sure this wouldn't have ended up this way. But you know, when you try and, when you try and think you're above it, 
you could just move on and carry on your career without you know uh addressing these things head on this is what basically happens it continues here it says according to legal documents obtained by tmz callan claims gabriel uh, contacted his reps at talent agency caa and asked whether they're still representing callan in light of the allegations but <laughs> this is mad absolutely maddening suggesting doing so would send a message to the victims that this behavior is okay Callan says the email went on to say do you um why did it say call when it's not happening they said claims oh contact sorry contacted it said um Callan said the email went on to say do you and caa still represent this sexual assault predator i hope the answer is no and that's essentially what this is what i mean with jen which i have a bit of a bug to bear she says she's not trying to cancel the guy but this is essentially what cancel culture is even what she's doing on twitter now with her thread of contacting all the clubs and adding them and stuff that's what cancel culture is right that's essentially a quintessential counterculture again does he deserve it who knows whatever if you believe the allegations you probably say yes whatever that but the fact of the matter is that is quintessentially what counterculture is contacting you know his places of employment contacted place brands and corporations that are linked to him in order to basically bring him down stop his way of making income as a kind of retribution for the acts of the crimes that you think he's guilty of committing um, anyway, it continues here. Article it says, um, what's more, Callan claims Gabriel went as far as contacting comedy clubs, attempted to get them to drop him. He claims some comedy clubs have cut ties with him after Gabriel reached out to them. Callan was vehemently denied Catherine's claims and claims Gabriel's efforts have seriously damaged his career. He's suing Gabriel for unspecified damages. And this is a funny thing as well, right? Most comedy clubs will probably be okay with having him at their show. I just think they just don't want the hassle. When people call up and start to cancel and say, we're going to threaten you with this and that, call him bomb threats and all this malarkey, friend to go and pick it outside the show and protest and run on stage and bloody blah, blah, blah. Comedy shows, just comedy clubs just don't want that hassle, right? They're already suffering as it is. The last thing they need is bad press in the media and then to have people turn up, to have the local community turn on. They don't want that. But it does go to show that there is an op that there is a, a, an ability, there is an option, or there is a route for you to go and earn some money on the road, even with these allegations above your head. But you have to deal with them beforehand. You can't just go, you can't just be accused of what you're accused of, you know, put out a strongly worded tweet and then decide to just kind of carry on. That's not what happens, right? Like you don't just like stick over what what they put over the kid. They put the rinks over the kid and just decide to put on the show. Like just everything that they've done post these allegations has been horrendous. And just imagine what would have where we would be right now or where Cannon would be right now if Brendan Shaw was allowed to just go off, as he says, on the topic. Imagine if he was able to comment on this the way he wants to. He would have he would have made this ten times worse. Right, he would have said something about the woman's looks or something like you know what he would have said. He would have said some mad thing that would have made it even worse than what it is now at the moment. So um, yeah, I don't know what the solution is. I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't know how it's going to pan out. I'm pretty sure that again, as I mentioned in the beginning, no one really wins in this. The victims of said crime are going to be, um, you know, trolled and persecuted online via some of the Callan's more ardent fans Callan doesn't win his family doesn't win Jen doesn't win the husband doesn't win no one wins because essentially no one wants to deal with this like an adult no one wants to sit down talk about what's happened kind of come to some sort of resolution people just want to what cancel somebody like what what do you want me to do like walk into the middle of a highway like jump off a bridge like what is the solution here at the end of the day and again if he's guilty of this stuff like I don't know what it, what happens in a court of law do you do you sue him do you go and give a police statement i don't know what happens but there needs to be some idea in terms of how we get from this point to some point of resolution because at the moment how it's playing out now in public is just it's making everyone look terrible it's making everyone look terrible but again i think most of the blame in my opinion again just from my point of view i said definitely lays on the fear of Callan. even if the allegations are not true you can't just deal with them the way he's dealt with them right just decide to get back on your show i'm going to talk on there openly about it it's just come on do like give these give these allegations the level of respect they needed uh, internal investigation whatever it may be hire a private investigator do something to make these to make um to kind of uh, um to save your career to basically you know get this smart off your name do something do something but instead here's here's what we have but again let me know your thoughts on down below what do you think the solution is do you think jen will stop um do you think the husband of um the rape victim is is well within his rights to be trying to cancel him in terms of his comedy gigs do you think Callan's going about it the right way should he be going on tour let me know what you think down below in the comments i'd love to know your thoughts and opinions anyway that is an hour i guess and more so of the excellent english show thanks so much for tuning in, as per usual if it's your first time listening to a show via 
uh, the podcast app, I guess. Make sure you leave the five star review on um, whatever app that you're using. That would be much appreciated. If you're watching via YouTube, please make sure you smash that like, hit subscribe, and leave a comment down below. And of course, if you want to support the show via Patreon, please make sure you do via the link down below to patreon.com, which is Agostino. For as little as $1 per month, you get access to my entire library as well as this show in full audio format before anybody gets it. So make sure you jump on Patreon now. Do not delay. But until then, see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Have a good one. Peace.